building with the sawtooth roof on the, on the uh, right side. The gray one that's a newer art gallery called the Polygon Gallery. And the building with the red steel tower, the big letter Q at the top, that's Lonsdale Key. It serves as the C bus transit hub for North Vancouver. The C bus is a commuter ferry. And if you just look up uh, now to the right, you see a dock, and there's the uh, blue, yellow, and gray C bus docked on the right hand side. And Lonsdale Key also features 80 shop services and restaurants. Uh, the C bus itself is a commuter ferry that runs between here and Waterfront Station in downtown. It only takes 12 minutes uh, to cross the inlet on the C bus, and the system contains five catamarans, like the one you see here, that can uh, each carry upwards of 385 passengers. The C bus has been in operation since 1977, and it features a 99.9% .9 service reliability. on the left. Uh, we're getting some great views of the skyline of downtown Vancouver if you want to take some pictures. <laughs> now they're a bit shrouded in clouds today, but if you uh, look in behind the city of North Vancouver, rising up there, those are the North Shore Mountains. And they form part of the Coast Mountain Range that extends from here in Vancouver all the way up to the Alaska border. The two mountains closest to us, uh, if you look up ahead to the right, uh, there you see some homes uh, stretching up the hillside. That is Mount Hollyburn, and there is a uh, ski hill called Cypress located at the top. Directly to our right is Grouse Mountain, and you can see the uh, white uh, patch of ski hill up at the top of that. And both mountains offer skiing, snowboarding, and snowshoeing in the winter, and also hiking and camping in the summer. Grouse Mountain, directly to our right, got its name back in 1894 when a hiking party discovered flocks of uh, gray grouse at the top. Now, if you want to save a few dollars and not take the gondola up to the summit of Grouse Mountain, uh, you're very welcome to walk up for free the infamous Grouse Grind, which is a steep 2.9 kilometer trail that rises about 1,200 meters. A very fit person can complete the Grouse Grind in about an hour, but the record is 25 minutes and one second. Just to the right here, this uh, blue and white ship called Spirit of the Nation, that used to be a BC ferry uh, called Queen of the Islands, and it was actually built right here in North Vancouver back in 1962. As the Queen of the Islands, it used to sail between uh, Tawasin, just south of Vancouver, and Salt Spring Island, which is one of our Gulf Islands. And then behind the Spirit of the Nation, you see this other gray ship that has a maple leaf on the funnel. And as we come closer, or pass it, you'll see it has the number 151 painted on the side. Uh, that's actually uh, a retired uh, Canadian Navy ship. It was called HMCS Fortune, and it was built in 1954 and then decommissioned in 1966. It was sold to a private party, and it's now used as a private yacht.
Now the best place to spot harbor seals in this area, if you look between us and the shore off on the right, there's a ring of logs and there are some black pillars with these white pointed tops on them. And we often see uh, seals sitting up on top of the logs there. They can be a little hard to spot because of course they're intended to blend in with their surroundings. Generally where we see them is we pass this small white boat on the right hand side. If you look on the far right side of the log ring, uh, that's generally where the, uh, the seals are located. And the bridges inform me that indeed, if you look on the far right hand side of the log ring, or actually the log ring on the back, uh, there are a bunch of harbor seals sitting up on top of the logs there. seals can be found all along the west coast from California to Alaska. And they can grow to be between 250 and 350 pounds. We're actually just coming into the birthing season for our baby seals. Uh, they are typically born sometime between now and the end of July. And a baby seal will stay with its mother about three months before setting off on its own. A male harbor seal will live an average of 20 years and a female an average of 30 years. Seals are also incredible swimmers, and they can hold their breath underwater, some of them for up to 30 minutes. <laughs> now just off to our left here, you see a tugboat and some barges, the red, white, and black ones. And these are owned and operated by C-SPAN Marine Corporation, which is Canada's largest marine transport company. They started as a small firm right here in Vancouver back in 1898. Today they have over 45 tugboats and 350 barges like these ones in operation all along the west coast. Now there are coastal communities in BC that do not have road access, or they have limited road access. They might only have road access in the summer. And so barges are the best way to bring in needed supplies like groceries and uh, building materials.
So now we're getting some great views again of downtown Vancouver, great for picture taking. I just want to point out also on the right here, you see another couple of barges, and uh, one with the yellow and blue wheelhouse. And just like the one I pointed out earlier, these are petro bulkers, so they're refueling barges. I also want to point out, if you look uh, behind this one barge that's tied up on the dock over there, uh, in behind you see these great big piles of bright yellow material sitting there. That's actually Jello powder. That's our local Jello factory. Today, obviously, they're making lemon Jello. It's yellow. Yesterday, those piles were purple. That would have been grape Jello. And the day before that, the piles were red. That would have been strawberry Jello. This one Jello factory supplies all of our local school cafeterias, hospitals, and nursing homes with delicious Jello dessert. That yellow material over on the docks, that's not jello powder, that's drink crystals. No, it's actually not drink crystals either. The yellow material is sulfur, which is a byproduct of oil and gas production. It's brought here to the harbor in powder form. It's compressed into pellets and then shipped overseas where it's uh, made into fertilizer. A couple of reasons why they can leave uh, yellow piles, or sorry, uh, sulfur piles like this out in the open. One is sulfur is very heavy. Uh, so it doesn't blow around in the wind, and also sulfur is uh, doesn't dissolve in water, so it's safe to sit outside even in the rain. Just up ahead to the right over there on the other side of the harbor, that heavily wooded area that you see is Vancouver's beautiful Stanley Park. Back in the 1860s, that area was actually the site of a military base operated by the British so they could monitor activity here in the harbor. And its designation as a military site saved the land from development, though much of the peninsula was heavily logged until the 1880s. One of the consequences of all that logging is there's very little old growth forest left in Stanley Park. Almost all of the trees you see here have been replanted sometime in the last 130 years. Stanley Park was officially opened on September the 27th, 1888 by Lord Stanley, who was Canada's Governor General at the time, and it's the same Lord Stanley of the National Hockey League Stanley Cup. Stanley Park contains over 150,000 cedar, hemlock, and fir trees, and also abundant wildlife. Off in the distance to the right, connecting Stanley Park to the North Shore, you see the Lionsgate Bridge. Planning for that bridge actually started back in the 1890s in order to encourage development on the north side of Burrard Inlet. Plans for the bridge actually caused a lot of controversy because of where it's located. They were also going to have to build a roadway that would divide Stanley Park into two. Vancouverites rejected the idea of a bridge numerous times in the early 1900s, but in 1933, a plebiscite narrowly passed permitting the bridge's construction with the provision that the bridge be built by people left unemployed by the Great Depression. The bridge cost $5.8 million to construct, and when it was opened in 1939 by King George VI and Queen Elizabeth, who are the parents of our current Queen Elizabeth II, it was the longest suspension bridge in the Commonwealth. 
the bridge has a span of 473 meters, stands 111 meters tall, and has a ship's clearance of 61 meters. That's about the height of a 20-story building. The Landscape Bridge sees between 60 and 70,000 vehicles cross it every day. And in 2005, it was named the National Heritage Site of Canada. An interesting fact about the Lionsgate Bridge, it was actually privately financed. No public funds were used to build it. The money came from the Guinness family, descendants of Irish beer maker Sir Arthur Guinness. And for the first 25 years after the bridge opened, it uh, had a 25 cent toll on it. And that money was uh, used to offset the cost of the bridge's construction. you see off to the right, the red and white one. That's the Brockton Point Lighthouse, and Brockton Point was named after Sir Francis Brockton, who discovered the first veins of coal in Coal Harbor. The first version of the lighthouse was built in 1890 in order to aid the navigation of ships in and out of the harbor. The version you see here was built in 1915. Those black arches at the bottom of the uh, lighthouse were originally intended to become part of a marina, but that plan was shelved when they discovered that there were actually a strong and uh, dangerous currents in the area. Extending to the left of Brockton Point, with, uh, you see a stone wall that's got folks walking and jogging on top of it, and that's the sea wall. It's a stone perimeter that was originally designed to save Stanley Park shoreline from erosion. And they later added the recreation path on top. During the Great Depression, the seawall also served as a make work project for 2,300 unemployed people. And today it's a uh, 22 kilometer or 15 mile long recreation path that starts right here in Cole Harbor, extends all the way around Stanley Park and into Fall Street on the south side of downtown. The small structure you see on the left hand of the seawall that's actually attached to it, that stone and uh, wood structure, that's the 9 o'clock gun. There's a cannon inside that was cast in Willich, England back in uh, 1814 and brought here to Vancouver in 1894. Back in those days they would fire the cannon to signal the end of the fishing day. It would uh, give the signal to fishing boats so they could make it back into the harbor before it turned on. And it could be heard from the Skyway's house sound in the Fraser River. Today every evening at 9 p.m. you can still hear the loud bang from the cannon throughout the city. And that's one of Vancouver's longest standing traditions.
boxes tied on the upper boughs of the trees. Back in those days, the island was a traditional tree burial ground used by the Squamish First Nation. The bears who were caught or suspended in a tree, the higher the social standing of the person it contained. The island was also later sadly used as a quarantine facility and burial ground during a smallpox outbreak here. about making Dead Man Island into part of Stanley Park. But it was converted into the Naval Station in 1944 during World War II. Also want to point out the Chevron Marine Filling Station off to the right. There used to be several of these marine filling stations around the harbor. as Canada's first public aquarium. And today they have over 70,000 marine specimens there. And they also have a marine mammal uh, rehabilitation center. If you get a chance, it's a great place to visit. Now just off on the left here, over on the dock, uh, up on top of some poles, you see a silver shed. It's actually an art installation called Light Shed, and it was created back in 2004 by sculptor Liz Magor. It's a half-scale replica of the uh, boat sheds that used to lie on Coal Harbor. It was cast in aluminum, and it's painted in a slightly luminescent paint, so it actually glows faintly in the dark. Bayshore Hotel, and it sits on a piece of land that used to be called Kanaka Ranch. Back in the 1890s, Vancouver actually had a 